What's going on YouTube? Alright, today we're going to bring you, uh, actually this is going to be like a, uh, a weekly segment, probably every Sunday. <laughs> today we're going to bring you weird news. Weird news this week. Okay. Latest oddly enough news, and this is brought to you by Reuters.com. Oddly enough news. China cracks down on Slay Red Dragon Doomsday Cult. Okay. Second one. Vodka helps stranded elephants survive in Russia. Third one. It's okay to crank up the music, Florida Supreme Court rules. Four. Vatican denies free Christmas crib linked to corruption scandal. And five. Texan carves pentagram into his son's back on holy day of 12 12 12. Whoa, that's. Ooh, that's something to check out. Okay. This story reads... <laughs> this dude's a winner. Look at him. Oh my god. He looks like Dr. House on crack. Okay. A Texas man told authorities he carved a pentagram into the back of his six-year-old son because it is a holy day. In reference to the numerical date of 12-12-12. Because it is... Okay, hold on. Let me make sense of this. 666-12-12-12. So it's twice as bad as 666. Okay. So if it was 666, he'd probably just draw, I don't know, uh, a half a pentagram. So, Brent Troy Bartell, 39 of the Fort Worth suburb of Richland Hills, was in jail Wednesday on a $500,000 bond, charged with aggravated assault of a family member with a deadly weapon. Police officers responded to an emergency dispatch and Call shortly after midnight from a man who said, I shed some innocent blood, according to an audio recording of the emergency 9-11 call released by police. When questioned by the dispatcher, the man said, I inscribed a pentagram on my son. When the disp dispatcher asked, Why? The man responded, Because it is a holy day, according to the recording. He then hung up. Moments later, police received a call from the boy's mother at a neighbor's house, said Officer Sheena Parsons. Richland Hills police spokeswoman, the mother could be heard on that recording crying and asking for help. No shit. Police arrived at the Bartel home and found the boy shirtless and shivering, with a large pentagram carved on his back. Officers also found a box cutter at the house, which is believed to have been used in the attack, police said. The, pl the boy was taken to a Fort Worth hospital for treatment. His injuries were not life threatening, Parsons said. Police and Child Protective Services were <laughs> investigating the attack. Yep. Wednesday was 12-12-12. A date some considered significant because such a match of day, month, and year will not occur again in this century. The pentagram is a five-pointed star sometimes associated with Satanism. Okay. So carve a... Uh, okay, first off, let's just, let's just uh, go with this. Um... Is it not against Christian religious to uh, really have tattoos that isn't a carving on the back, the same thing as a tattoo? Except a lot dead there. Okay. Now, why would somebody on a holy day draw a pentagram? Shouldn't you have given him a cross? Weird fucked up people in this world, I'll tell you that much. So, <laughs> next news story. We gotta find out about this China cracks down on Slay Red Dragon Doomsday Cult. That's I don't even know what that's about. Maybe they just don't like the cult and killed them. I don't know. Rooters. China has launched a crackdown on a cult it says is calling for a decisive battle to slay the Red Dragon Communist Party, and which has been spreading doomsday rumors. State media said on Friday. In recent weeks, hundreds of members of the Almighty God group have clashed with police, sometimes outside of government buildings. In central Henan, I'm not sure how you say that, nor do I know how to say the rest of these, northern Shanxi and southwestern Gansu provinces, according to photos on popular microblogs. The group has incited followers to launch a decisive battle with the Big Red Dragon to make the Red Dragon extinct and to establish the reign of the kingdom of the Almighty God. The provincial Sanxi Daily said on its website. Really? So once again, back to religious. Religious uh, weirdos. 
It added that the sect's followers have been distributing leaflets saying that the world will end in 2012. Right there, kooks. That doesn't give it away at all. China's Communist Party brooks no challenge to its rule and is obsessed with social stability. It has particularly taken aim at cults, which have been <laughs> multiplied across the country in recent years. Demonstrations have been put down with the force, put down with force, and some sect leaders executed. The State Bureau of Religious Affairs has already documented the group's cult nature, has outlawed it, and is presently harshly cracking down. The Shanks, we're just going to call him Shan. Shan said, <laughs> it did not say how many followers the sect had, which means it had six. The State Bureau of Religious Affairs did not answer repeated calls from rooters seeking comment. Alright, that was about pointless to read. But this one, I think, should be fun. I, I, I think I laughed when I heard this. Okay. Vodka helps stranded elephants survive in Russia. Two circus elephants drank vodka to help them survive when their trailer caught fire in freezing Siberia. Okay, that just doesn't make sense anyway. It's freezing in Siberia, and there's fires. Okay. You would think uh, the snow would uh, do something with that fire in a circus, but what do I know? A quick-thinking handler resorted to the traditional Russian cure for all ills by buying two cases of vodka from a nearby village, diluting it with warm water, and serving it to Indian elephants Jenny and Magda. He had become desperate after realizing that making them run round the broken truck was not enough to prevent them from freezing to death before a new trailer arrived to complete their journey. RIA quoted a local official as saying the vodka had helped them survive. After they rode as if they were in the jungle, apparently they were happy. Is that Russian? I don't know. We'll stick with it. Jenny and Magna, touring the region with the Polish circus, were then taken to a local school gym with little more than frostbite on their ears and trunks. They reached their final decision in the Siberian city of Omsk on Friday and began rehearsing for circus performances over Christmas and the New Year. It didn't really uh, turn out the way I thought it would. But, uh, if you guys didn't know, vodka is a lifesaver. Just ask elephants. Vatican denies free Christmas crib. That doesn't actually sound entertaining at all. Vatican denies free Christmas crib linked to corruption scandal. Uh-oh, corruption in the religious sect. Okay. The Vatican said on Thursday there was no link between its decision to accept the gift of a nativity scene in St. Peter's Square and allegations that it had previously paid inflated prices to have them built. This year's larger-than-life Christmas scene of Jesus' birth worth about 90,000 euros, which is $120,000, was donated by the Southern Religion of Basilicata, one of Italy's poorest. Some of the documents that sparked this year's Vatican's Vitili What the fuck is this word, man? Can we stop saying the stupid shit and just say the fucking scandal indicated that in 2009 the Vatican paid an Italian company six times that amount, about 550,000 euros, 720,000 dollars, to build its nativity scene in the square. I mean, come on. Who the fuck? How do you say V A T I L E A K S? Vataliks? I mean, what the fuck is a Vatalik, man? Just, just a. I don't know. Fuck it. The. Where am I at? The letters leaked to the media mention the payment as an example of corruption in the city's state business dealings. Monsieur Giuseppe Schiocco. I mean, come on, dude. Like, whatever. Deputy Governor of the Vatican City was asked by reporters whether accepting a donated crib was a response to the scandal. This is exclusively the result of the offer by Biscalata region to give us this gift, which, with a minimum of good sense, has been accepted, he said. Who gives a shit about this story? What the fuck, man? I don't give a f sh This is stupid. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's uh, episode, or this week's episode of Odd News. So please, come back next week when we talk about stupid ass shit once again that makes no fucking difference in the world. Like Vatican getting money from a fucking crib and they overpaid for it. So, thank you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.